Toyota just confirmed it will electrify this van in 2025. The best-selling Toyota van in Australia could get an electric powertrain. Toyota has reportedly just confirmed that it will electrify its van in 2025. So, what new specifications will be given to the van, and what will be its price? And on which electric-specific platform will this electric van apparently be built? And most importantly, what are Toyota's further plans for EVs and their batteries? Let's get started! Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech Addict. In today's video, we are going to discuss Toyota Hiace, which will be electrified in 2025. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos. According to the Japanese publication Best Car Web, Toyota is developing an electric high ace that will be available in 2025. It'll apparently ride on the Toyota BZ4X and Subaru Solterra's dedicated electric e TNGA platform. You would love to hear that Toyota and Lexus are currently in the process of bringing out a range of e TNGA cars, including the Lexus RZ, and they T16 of them in concept form before the end of last year. The fleet of concepts featured vans as small as the Microbox and as large as the mid-box, yet even the mid-box appear to be considerably more compact than the high ace. It is possible that the next electric van will have a luggage compartment that is significantly shorter than that of the combustion-powered high ace models. Additionally, the seating position of the occupants may be slightly further back than it was in the Ford Control H200 series high ace. It's also possible that it may have a longer snout, which would indicate that it will seem proportionately more similar to the existing H300 series that's been offered in Australia since 2019. In Japan, Toyota continues to provide sales of the older H200 model. According to reports, it is anticipated that the model, which is approximately 20 years old, will remain available for purchase for the foreseeable future. The latest model, which is longer and wider, is not available in Japan, with the exception of the People Mover variant known as the Grand Ace or Grand Via. And did you know that Toyota is also working on an electric version of the Town Ace, a smaller van that's positioned below the high ace in the Japanese market? In addition to that, an electric people mover could emerge from this. Even though they are rebranded as Stellantis vehicles and are only available in Europe, the company already offers a pair of electric vans for sales. The Peugeot Expert is rebadged as the Pro Ace Electric, while the Peugeot Partner is rebadged as the Pro Ace City Electric. The Renault Kangoo ZE is the only electric van that's been available on the market in Australia up until this point. This is going to change in the near future, as the Mercedes-Benz e Vito is scheduled to arrive in the United States this year, while the Ford e-Transit and the new Renault Kangoo E-Tech Electric are scheduled to arrive in 2023. In 2024, Ford will release its E-Transit Custom, Renault will release its Master E-Tech Electric, and Mercedes-Benz plans to have its next-generation E-Sprinter available at this location. In addition, LDV plans to release an electric version of the Deliver 9 in Australia, and the company is expecting something big from this masterpiece. At the end of the previous year, Toyota dropped hints about its upcoming lineup of electric vehicles that included hatchbacks, sedans, crossovers, sports cars, and even a huge truck, and this can be a surprise for us if Toyota will do so. It has a target of selling 3.5 million electric vehicles each year by the year 2030, and it plans to introduce 30 electric vehicles before then. Headlined by the BZ4X. In 2021, the firm had a total global sales of more than 10 million automobiles, of which roughly 9 million were vehicles bearing the Toyota name. A prior plan called for the sale of 2 million electric vehicles by the year 2030. The newly proposed plan indicates a significant increase over that estimate. Toyota has been criticized for its delayed rollout of electric vehicles, and there have been claims that the company has influenced various governments to lessen their policies regarding EVs. This is despite the fact that Toyota has increased its EV ambitions. Toyota has responded to charges that it is a CO2 pariah by stating that its early adoption of hybrid vehicles and continued commitment to them have helped reduce the company's overall carbon footprint. According to Sean Hanley, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Toyota Australia, there are not too many other car companies with a fuel cell hydrogen car riding around right now. They will launch their first battery electric vehicle into the market next year. They have hybrid vehicles and will have plug-in hybrid vehicles. He continued, The idea is that they believe that carbon is the enemy, and to attain carbon neutrality, we've got to offer a varied variety of technologies relevant to the market that we are in. According to the data provided by FCAI, Toyota is the lowest emitter of CO2 per car when it comes to passenger cars and light SUVs. How 
However, the company does far less well with its bigger selling heavy 4x4s and commercial vehicles, which are particularly dominant in regional Australia. The Land Cruiser is most prevalent in the nation, which is also the largest market for the High Lux, which is the best selling vehicle overall in Australia, and the High Ace is the most popular van in Australia. And now it's time to reveal Toyota's further plans for EVs. Toyota announced plans to invest $5.6 billion in new electric vehicle battery production facilities in Japan and the United States. Toyota, however, stated that it's not yet sure that EVs are the best way to move forward, unlike other automakers. Toyota, the world's largest car maker in terms of vehicle sales, has fallen behind the majority of other major global automakers in developing purely battery-powered EVs while being a pioneer in hybrid gas electric vehicles for more than two decades. Competitors like Volkswagen, General Motors, and Ford offer significant more battery-powered EVs and have a substantial number of EVs in development. Toyota has made greater investments than other automakers in the development of electric vehicles driven by hydrogen fuel cells rather than rechargeable batteries. The only emissions from the fuel cells would be water vapor, which complies with stricter environmental standards now in effect, such as the rules imposed by California this week that would ban gas-powered internal combustion vehicles by 2035. Toyota's statement regarding the new investment in a battery plant stated that the company is still exploring alternative methods to fulfill tougher emission regulations outside battery-powered electric vehicles. Toyota believes that there are multiple ways to achieve carbon neutrality and the means of decreasing CO2 emissions as much and as rapidly as possible while protecting the livelihoods of its customers very substantially by country and location. With this in mind, Toyota will continue to provide several powertrains and provide as many options as possible in order to fulfill the needs of its diverse customers in all nations and regions. In contrast to battery-powered EVs, which can be charged at home or at an increasing number of public charging stations, fuel cell-powered vehicles require an entirely new infrastructure for hydrogen refueling, and these possibilities remain extremely limited, particularly outside of California. The BZ4X SUV, which launched on sale earlier this year, is the sole battery alone EV offered by Toyota in North America. Toyota had to warn a small number of early buyers not to drive the vehicles due to the possibility of the wheels detaching. The company has been compelled to offer to buy back vehicles from customers since it's not yet devised a solution to the problem. Approximately half the money Toyota plans to spend on EV battery manufacture will be used to expand an already under construction plant in Liberty, North Carolina. The expenditure will increase the cost of the facility from $1.3 billion to $3.8 billion. Toyota needs to make some of its EV batteries made in the U.S. more powerful, and new tax credits for people who buy electric vehicles have limits based on where the batteries are made. For a car to be eligible for the tax credit, 50% of its battery components must be made or put together in North America starting in 2023 and 60% in 2024 and 2025. This number will slowly go up until it's 100% in 2029. So sending batteries from Asia to the U.S. assembly plants could make it harder for people who want to buy electric cars to get tax credits worth thousands of dollars. Hey, we sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends and family. And let us know if you have any questions or comments for us down below. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel too. And thanks for watching.